Uh, Yurani asks uh, one question in Power Apps. Can I see if a flow is running? Well, maybe not in the front end Power App that you've created or you're using, but you are able to go into Power Automate. And then I believe there is a monitor tab on the left rail and underneath monitor, you'll see the different types of activities like Cloudflow activity or desktop flows, depending on what you built, but you should be able to see the runs that you have uh, ac access to, excuse me. You know, it, it, a question that this just kind of makes me think about there's it's increasingly uh, uh, you know coming up is around you know the governance of power apps and power automates those different activities and in fact I just interviewed somebody this week that uh, is uh, you know had strong recommendations around creating kind of a center of excellence around you know the the citizen developer you know activities in general. But you know, for tracking like all the flows that are available within the organization, I mean, is anybody here, you know, doing it to that? Are there organizations doing it to that level where you're tracking? You have, you know, more visibility into who created when, where it's actually deployed and being used. I've only seen it from a developer aspect, uh, you know, because it's kind of native to developers to track that kind of stuff, um, especially when they, you know, put it into a CI uh, or. You know what they're they're following it and they're creating the power app with source control. Uh, but uh, I mean, I've never seen it. People are using it. I know for a big, big uh, uh, insurance company here, and they probably have thirty or maybe more than that now. Uh, and <laughs> they're kind of all over the board, really. It's just yeah. uh, the wild west right now. And that's that's kind of it's kind of like SharePoint when it first came out. It, you know, the governance around SharePoint is kind of like the wild west for a lot of people because uh, they really don't grasp the concept of needing, you know, <laughs> you know, the standards and things like that. Well, orgs need to understand there's it's not just a binary choice. It's not just the turn it all on, let everybody do everything, the Wild mm -hmm. West approach, or we don't know what it is. Therefore, we fear it, lock everything down, not let people do things. Uh, that there that just is, scares people away. That just, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, right, because yeah. they'll they'll go find their way to get their work done, whether or not you give them permission to do it. And so uh, you want to do it in a in a managed control. Well, it's controlled is probably the wrong word for it. A you know, it, it, a secure and administered, you know, process. That's what governance should be about. It's not getting in the way of people getting their work done, but doing it in a safe, uh, you know, measurable, reliable way. Yeah. Norm, I, I, go ahead. I thought there is, so back to that original question, I thought there was uh, some nuance about being able to monitor in the, uh, the flow itself or the app. Are you talking about the admin being able to see through the, or were you referring to a? I think he's making a segue because he, you know, originally was monitoring what happens with the app because is anybody actually watching the flows? Is anybody actually, uh, you know, making sure that they run, making sure there's no errors, making sure this and that. And then Christian kind of dived into, well, you know, this overall governance, uh, making sure everybody understands. So um, I think that's where that was going. Am I, I don't want to speak for you, Christian, but I think that's where you're going with it. Yeah. Okay. So my, my assumption when answering was the user is interacting with the, the Power App they've submitted a job or clicked a button that's triggering it. And sometimes you do get a um, uh, a window, a dialogue window that comes up and says you can monitor this flow and it essentially brings you over to the, the monitor Cloudflow activity for that case. But I don't think that's always the case. So it could be undertaken by uh, a power automated bin, but it could also be done as a user. Presumably they can see the flow if they're executing the flow. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. Right. Because you just you click the flow in the in your my flows dashboard, and it shows you its history at the bottom of that. And currently, I have two of them running. The one that I'm looking at, it's waiting for me to approve my t retweets. <laughs> mm -hmm. So. So it, yeah. it is a it is an interesting conversation around governance, and a lot of people, you know, maybe probably myself included, probably don't have the full grasp of of what governance should look like with. Uh, 
with the Power Platform. Uh, things like the, the, the COE toolkit are a big investment in, in, in time and ability. So you, you come to this, this point where, you know, guidance, or sorry, uh, a governance branches off to guidance and uh, things like Power Automate are great for personal productivity, but you reach that point where I, I'm, I'm running the, the business of the organization from my personal account and where's the, the guidance needs to be there to say, perhaps there should be a service type of account or a service principle, depending on, on the use case and having the guidance, the mentoring from organizational leaders to, uh, to help implement that safeguards, the investment that users are making on behalf of their organization. Well, there's that's, a, that's, a, oh, sorry, go ahead, Sherry. There, there's a second question in the list that might be a good thing to kind of roll together. Um, the, it's talking about the flows and when to use, you know, service accounts versus personal accounts. Right. So. Which is kind of what I was going to just comment on, Sherry. Exactly that point is that there's a, it's a key part of any governance strategy is at the beginning is like stepping back and looking, okay, what is our approach? What are the right ways? Like we see now this activity, it's a bit of the wild west out there. Now let's step back and say, how do we want to approach this in general? And it might be that, okay, we're going to set a policy now that we're going to create these these solutions with a service application. Therefore, we can then centrally manage, monitor, and manage, and we'll only authorize, like, it's great if somebody has a need there, but we want to authorize certain people to go and create those or to launch those, and let's, again, put a process in place. Not meant to slow down the needs, like, uh, the, the, the difficulty where a lot of shadow IT uh, happens is where, IT is not responsive to the needs of end users if they have to wait too long for for those needs. So if you find you're it's taking too long, you know don't don't be surprised. People then go around the process. Part so of that, that, part of that issue is Christian that people should. I mean, if you're in IT and you know that there are people that are engaging in this, if it's not something that's kind of like a stealth operation from another department or business unit or something like that, you need to be on top of this because. So many times, I'm sure we've all seen this, is that it's really you're being reactive to everything. And the biggest problem is, like you said, you have to go back, you're going to create the policies around things that are already created. And one of the biggest complaints that I, I've heard of and I've gotten called in to help with is the retrofitting of what was already created to align right. to these new policies that have been put in place because they didn't have the policies. Now they have them and they're like, oh, we got to change all this now to yeah. match what they want us to do. So. But that that's just the reality. That's the, the, the that's part of that organic process. New technology, we're learning how to use it. Now we understand it, we realize, but we need to do it this way. Here's why. And yeah. I just think that you make need to make that process transparent, work with those end users and on those flows that are out there, especially if it's, getting broad acceptance and it's being used and say, this is what we have to go and rebuild this. Anything net new, use this. And then over time, like, I, I don't, I don't believe in the rip the bandaid off, just kill all those existing flows. And now we've created the new way. You, you have to do something in between to kind of baby step the organization. And so, and to, sometimes, sometimes rip and replace doesn't work. <laughs> right. Exactly. And so, and but I, but it all starts with being clear and like document, like here's why, and then it's it should always be a conversation first before right. you go and the hammer drops and you will do this. So for my benefit, I I've built many flows that are relied on for for some key business stuff, and I don't know the difference between a service account and a service principal. Mm, is, yeah. is, is there a difference there and yeah there is. can can you illuminate me please <laughs> <laughs> well a, a, a service account is uh a object that is associated with a uh specific group uh a specific role correct a service principle isn't uh can be associated to multiple roles a principal object can associate itself to multiples and it works mainly with applications or applications that access uh, resources um, within an infrastructure like azure okay because they have service principles they do have service principles in like google cloud 
and they do have a service principle. I don't know if they have, they call them service principles in AWS, uh, but in Azure, they use the term service principles. Um, so it, that the service principle is more of an interactive and uh, uh, multi-pronged. I mean, it can use uh, and do multiple things, whereas service account is kind of uh, a single, it, it's, it's specific to a role, uh, things like that. Gotcha, cool, thank you. Many of the actions and, and, and the triggers that you'll create in your flows have been directly associated to your account. Um, if you were to leave your organization and the account becomes deprovisioned over time, well, your flow stops to work. And so this is where we talk about safeguarding that investment. Um, maybe not to govern, but just to, to to save the investment is all I'm saying. And how do you, how do you bring that to people's attention? Like, <laughs> do you do you go? Is there is there some way to look at everyone that's got a flow and go proactively reach out? That's a great question. Um, I would hope that it's in the COE toolkit, but I I don't know for sure. Yeah, I'd be speaking out of turn. Yeah, that's actually a, to a, a great topic for another day. That actually yep. came up in the interview I did around the COE, the COE, the Center of Excellence template, and what's included and what's there in recommendations. Like that, we, we should definitely capture that in another recording. And and you're getting a link to the COE stuff. Yes. Do that right now. Great. Yeah. Thank you.